Namaskar, everyone. Uh, as she introduced me uh, as a politician, but I'm, I'm prohibited to talk about politics and political agenda. So I'm not going to talk about politics. Don't worry. And uh, I'll make sure that my talk won't get boring. I'll make sure. But I cannot guarantee you. <laughs> there are lots of things in life that you cannot guarantee. You seek lots of guarantees, but it's life, you know. It will hit on your heart. I was seven or so when I first got to know about my father's existence. It was with the mercy of my relatives, not exactly relatives, relatives that were connected to us from the very, 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 very far relation. I remember, I clearly remember that they the uninvited guest cheerfully entered my grandmother's room, and they gave free information, a lot of free information about my father. About my father, whom I had not seen, I had not seen since my birth, or since the time I, I started knowing who is who, who is what. But they came and they gave a lot of information to my grandmother. My grandmother was clearly listening to everything. She pulled me. I remember her soft hands pulling me hard that day. She made me sit on the couch and made me listen to what those aunties said loud and clear about my father. I also remember my aunties provoking me to lift up the pony of my father and rotate him like Ninja Hattori does in the cartoon. I had very blur image of my father, but I think I lifted up the pony and rotated him because my aunties had said so. That provoked me. I remember I, remember I had not asked plenty of questions at that time. I just listened and nodded to whatever they had said. And this series continued. I always listened. As a child, as a kid, in this society, you are expected to listen more, question less, nod your head, and move on. I'm brought up in the same society, so there is no much difference. The primary level, the secondary level, SLC, love affair, plus two, bachelors, and right now here. In the primary level, I still do not understand why my school had introduced Japanese language in my school. They had, they had made it compulsory. I was expected to say anata no onamae wa nan desu ka? And reply, watashi no onamae wa ranju desu. Arigatou gozaimasu, sayonara, mata shite. And these are the only words I know. <laughs> but even, if, even at that point of time, neither my parents, nor my teachers, nor my friends asked the question, why? Why is it important to learn different languages? Why? Why did you introduce this to those poor children who do not even understand, who do not even understand English language properly, who were trying best to learn English in Nepali? As we say, we have we have we have grown up. We have we have grown up from that point of time, but even from that point of time, the thing we lacked was question. After the primary level, in the secondary, in the lower secondary, the questioning tendency, the questioning habit didn't grow. Until, until I reached to my teenies. Oh my god, the teenies. You got a question a lot. And the teenies hit it hard in Ranju, Ranju Tarsana. So I used to ask each and every question, each and every degrees of questions, level of questions in my classroom. And that is how my friends named me Potato. 
In Nepali, alu. It sounds pretty cute in Nepali, though. Not in English. So uh, alu. An uh, alu person asking each and every type of question to the teachers, to the principals, to the directors, everyone, mainly to the maths teacher. Why the hell are you teaching me all this? Give me the reason. Let me know. Why do I need to know this? But no, shut up. You're just a student. Who gave you the rights to ask the question? <laughs> I didn't know at the time there is something called rights to ask the question. There is something called responsibilities that the teacher had upon us. I knew nothing, but I, I just used to ask questions. And that is the habit. That is the habit that led me to find a legitimate tool to ask the question. It was during my activism life that started in 2014. I knew about this thing called right to information. It was only after 2006, in the interim constitution of Nepal, right to information was secured as the fundamental rights of the people, of the individual. And now we have our pride in our hand, our constitution, and we have right to information in Article 27, fundamental rights. But I don't know how many of us use that. I myself use that sometimes, not other times, but I find it as a tool. But when I connect this right to information that I have in my political career, in my activism career, and the lacking of right to information in my personal life, I get thrilled. I get shocked. I could never ask my ex-boyfriend what was the reason he left me. I could never ask my auntie what was the reason she was backbiting about me. I could never ask the friend who just broke every connection with me what were the reasons. And they, of course, have right to privacy, right to not answer. but. I think our tendency, our habit of not asking the question and not answering the question one has asked has led many one to dive into the world of sadness, dive into the world of loneliness. I miss, I miss the right, the right to information in my personal life. I miss the right to information in the societal life as well. I must have got to know about right to information. All of us present in this hall are well educated, got good opportunities for the school, for the education, but I doubt how many of us only complained and never tried to ask questions. We have lots of complaints. I had two. Complaints about aunties, complaints about mother's angerness, complaints about the prime minister's work, complaints about the mirrors. And we always believe whatever it's written in the news headline. I don't know how many of you have watched the recent movie, Sun Tzu. But I was, I was really, happy to see what they have highlighted. The question mark and the full stop thing. We tend to believe whatever they say us. We tend to believe whatever the other person will say about Ranzu. Oh my God, look what she is doing. Look, I think she lives in a mansion. I think she has a car. I think she has two houses in Kathmandu. I also think so. I had seen her going to the big building some days back. Oh, yeah, we tend to believe that. But what we don't do is we don't question. We don't put a question mark to fix that up. We don't try to. And, and that is where we are just rotating ourselves.
My people, 2018, I'm 22 years old. 2022, 10 years more. 2028, sorry, that's, that's, that's why I, I, I'm very weak in maths. 2028, 10 years more. 2038, more, 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 more. As we'll grow, we will not. As we'll grow, our habits won't change if we won't start it right away. As Simon Sinek has clearly mentioned in his book, Find Your Why, I could just relate that Find Your Why to the RTI. Wow, it rhymes as well. RTI, right now I'm here standing, try to convince you to use this legitimate tool to use this tool that we have got. We cannot use that RTI with our ex-lover or with our boyfriend or with our girlfriend or with the aunties. But of course, we can use that RTI in the government, in the authorities. So what is stopping us? Why are we not doing so? Why are we just following the wave that's not leading us to the right destination? My dear friends, if the way you have taken is already wrong, I need to mention it clearly and loudly, the destination will be wrong as well. If the way is incorrect, how can you be assured that the destination will be correct? Therefore, I'm standing here, I still don't know what was the reason uh, my mother and my father got separated. and. Because I cannot use RTI, I cannot present the RTI letter to my living grandfather or to my living grandmother. I just have to believe whatever they've been saying, whatever my mother is saying. But it's different in personal life and societal life, national life, political life, or whatever. You can use RTI and you can also get answers. So if you file an RTI in any governmental offices, or any constitutional bodies, it will take you 15 days to get a valid, proper answers. Even if even in 15 days you don't get a valid answers, you can reach out to the director of the place. And if the director also terminates the, the letter you have uh, provided or the questions you have asked, then within 35 days you can go to National Planning Commission and the National Planning Commission will take 60 days, approx, to decide whether or not to give information. And then you can appeal to the court. Ah, it sounds very big thing, I know. It sounds very heavy thing, but it's quite simple. You just write a letter. You just ask questions about why isn't your roads being built properly? Why the government is taking a lot of taxes? Why this? Why that? And get your answer. And only with that answer, my dear friends, you can have proper discussion. You can put proper logics, proper arguments when debating with the politicians, when debating with any civil servants, sarkari karmachari. And I request you to use this RTI, right to information, where you can get answers. Don't use RTI with your aunties, with the families, with the lovers, because uh, I cannot guarantee that you will get valid answers. They always have invalid answers to just deny you, to just get you out from their life. And yes, that is where I cannot guarantee. And the place I can guarantee is you filing an RTI and you getting the answers from the RTI. Thank you, my dear friends. Thank you so much.